Hi, this is Anne again with a um, third anagram in the series on um, implementing this AIA and census stats code. Um, where I left off is um, I created a test list as opposed to the raw list, just so we have some nice small data to work with. So again, I'm going to hide that. And um, remind me when I'm at the end of this vid that I should um, show you that if I just simply switch back and forth between these two, if the code is working for the test list, it'll work for the raw data object list. So I'm going to skip ahead. Um, the last video had me implementing this uh, maximum function, so get the highest actual population state. I'm going to skip forward to. Um, the lowest percentage. Um, you'd think minimums and maximums would code would be really similar, but I un, I know that um, finding minimums seems to be harder for people, and I've never understood if that's because we always show it second, and so people get used to maxes first and then second, or what the deal is. Um, maybe it's just that the logic is a little bit backwards. So, as you recall, for this exercise, what you do is you comment in, I guess you'd call it, the code that's going to call a function. You come over here to the outline and try to grab the right function out of here. We're working on the lowest percentage. So I'm going to grab that. So you have the outline, the function signature, and um, the return value all defined for you. So grab that, control C, bring it over here, and I'm just going to tuck it in below the last function I did. Um, that's how I would recommend you implement these is, is implement the functions in order with the code that calls them down below in the run function. Okay, so I now have this function which exists and is callable. Um, I now have test data, which we're using. And what we want to do here is just run this and make sure all the dots are connected and I've got the code I think I do. So test early, test often. OK, so I'm seeing my various populations. I'm processing four states. I'm returning the highest population state. The lowest population state function is running but the result is undefined because I haven't implemented yet. So that's, that's you kind of want to start with an error you understand or, or a crash or something where the code is failing in a way that you understand and then your mini goal is to fix that one problem. So that's what we're going to do up here is um, come here and once again we are, we need to walk our way through the population object array. And in this case, instead of finding a largest value, we want to find a smallest value. Now, as I've said, you really can't do statistics on a set of values unless you have some idea of what those values are going to be. We know in this case that our percentages um, are kind of artificially integers, but they're positive numbers. They're all fairly small. Um, so in order to find a minimum, I have to start with a large value. And in this case, because of my data, I could easily start with 100, which would be 100%. Or I could start with 5, because my data doesn't go any bigger than 4, but that's probably not a safe value. Or every language has, an, has a value like this where the language itself defines the largest integer value. And um, rather than spend a lot of time analyzing your data and hoping that you pick this value right and worrying about it if it turns out that this value wasn't right to start with, what I would do for minimum code is simply look up, um, so JavaScript maximum, integer number. Okay, and 
basically for any language you work with, there'll be a value like this and how it is denoted will change radically from one language to another, but there pretty much always is one. So when you're doing minimum code, I would always start with the largest value your language provides, um, but you could start in this case with 100 or 200 or 1,000 and the code would work the same. So what are we going to do? We're going to walk through this um, population object array. So I'm just going to go ahead and code this up by hand and see if I can get it right. The for loop always starts with i equals zero if we're walking forward through an array. In this case, we've got a population object array. So do use this, these hints and let your ID help you. And we want to walk through every item, which means we're going from zero to one less, the indexes are one less than the length. So in this case, the length is four and the last index is three, zero, one, two, three, okay? And then we're gonna use the shorthand for add one to i every time and assign that back to i. Okay, so we have this nice loop. And what do we wanna do? We basically, for every single population object, in this case, state, we want to test for the minimum percentage, which is what we added to the raw data. So simply, if that, well, a couple ways to do this. Um, the last time I, I defined a current state um, variable, in this case, I'm just going to dereference this um, array as we go along. So, we're looking at the ith entry or pop object array sub i, and we're gonna test the percentage, okay? So we want to test this percentage value. And if that is less than the minimum, we wanna do two things. We wanna remember the new minimum, and then I'm a lazy typer. I already have something that I'm pretty sure is spelled right. I'm just gonna copy that. Okay, so we're gonna remember a new minimum, which is the current percentage, and we're gonna remember the current state. And that is the item in our array that we're working on. So let's just add a little telemetry here so that we know that this is actually working. I actually, when working for myself, I would probably have gone ahead and console logged and verified that the loop was working first before I did the if, but I'm trying to make this a shorter vid. So I'm trying to do this in, um, kind of take a couple of shortcuts. So what do I want to log? I just want to verify and look at each state as we go through the loop, which is going to assure me that I'm actually going through the loop. And then down here, I want to console log found new minimum and probably do pop objects. No, oh, do state here. Okay. So this way, I should see each state as we go through the loop, okay, with a label that says current state. And then if that state has a minimum, has a percentage lower than the current minimum, I should see this entry. And then at the very end, let's add one more console log. It doesn't take very long to add these when you get used to them and having the code talk to you like this is just so valuable. Okay. So that's a lot more code than I would normally write before I run, but um, in this case I really know what I want the code to do. Um, so I'm just going to take this and see if I get anywhere close to it working. Okay, so here we are in the loop. 
we're doing a current state, current where we found the new minimum, because if this is the biggest number available to us, we know for sure that the first state is going to find a new minimum. Okay. Now the second state has a percentage of four, so that's not less than the two we had up here. Um, here we have a one and that finds a new minimum. And I think I should probably do this just to sort of make that clearer that when we find a new minimum. Okay, so the first time through, you always find a new minimum. And that's why you don't wanna have your actual minimum at the first entry in the array, because if there's something wrong with your code, you may be fooling yourself that your code is working. And then finally down here for S3, we have a percentage of one, and that's the new, new minimum. And down here, um, state with min percentage is here. So let's just talk about a couple of things that can go wrong with this code. Um, I pointed this out before, that you could, if you're typing this, you could spell this wrong. Uh, let's just say you think it's len instead of length. And if this code runs, you can see that the debugging output is completely different, okay? We never go through the loop. And that's why it really is worth the time to take a couple of minutes and go ahead and log things as you go through the loop so that you know that your code is working, okay? So if, you know you're, if you're going through the loop, you can still get things wrong. I've seen this one thing. Let me see if I can make this fail. Um, I've seen people forget to put the property here, and so they're testing to see if the whole array is less than the minimum, so the current state, not the whole array, but the entry in the, in the array, so the current state. And if we run that, we can see that we're going through the loop, we're getting this output, but we're actually never, ever, ever finding this minimum. And so that that focuses our attention. We know that if we're getting this line and, it's per, and we're examining every state and we're never getting to see this line, then there's almost certainly got to be something wrong with this if statement, okay? Um, oh wait, like we could be testing the population instead of the percentage. And then in this case, we kind of kind of sort of works because the populations and the percentages are sort of artificially the same. Um, let me put this back. Let's let that be right. Now, if we get this greater than si sign right, uh, wrong, if we get this backwards, okay, so we're testing whether the percentage is bigger than the minimum when the minimum is a really big number. Once again, we go through the whole loop, but we never identify a state with a minimum percentage because no state's percentage is greater than the minimum. We have to be looking for less than. Okay. So let's assume I have code that's working. Let's go ahead and comment out the debugger statements in here. And again, don't get rid of them. Just comment them out. I won't ding you on grading if you've got some extra telemetry in here. Run this, okay, and see that the highest population state is S2 with population of four. The lowest percentage state is S3 with a percentage of one. So what I told you to remind me to do, so I'm gonna remember it, is if I come up here in the run function, come down here in the run function, and instead of this line where I'm working with the test list, I put back the line that processes the raw data object list and run that. Okay, I should see that the lowest percentage state, well, first of all, we're seeing that the highest population state is in fact California, which you will know from, from having changed the the comments at the bottom and eyeball the code to start with. And then the lowest percentage state is New York, which has um, about half a percent uh, American Indian, American 
native population. Um, American Indian Alaskan native population. So um, it's, I think it's well worth it to continue to work with your test list as you go through these things. Um, but do double check with the raw data object list because when you turn the code in, you absolutely positively need to remember to turn the code in processing the actual data I've given you and not some test data you come up with. Okay, so I'm gonna run this one more time, make sure that it's back to working, and that's it for this vid. Hope that was helpful.